So welcome guys to our panel discussion about artificial intelligence in crypto. This field is completely blowing up. The industry for AI itself is growing from a $200 billion business this year to projected to be $2 trillion by the end of 2023. This is what we're going to be focusing on today's panel discussion. Today we have Coach K and we have Carl here and they have me as well, uh, Michael. So we all have very different perspectives and different backgrounds. So let's start with Coach K first. You know, what do you think are the opportunities in AI, especially when it comes to Web3? Well, I think everyone saw with ChatGPT um, that, you know, AI is definitely something that it's a tool that can help us a lot. Obviously, there's ways to trick AI and making it be uh, not such a great tool for mm -hmm. us. So there's definitely challenges they need to go through. We're seeing ChatGPT kind of be less and less of its own mindset and kind of programmed to think a certain way or say things certain ways. So is that truly AI? I mean, yeah, you can train it to think that way, but like, is that really right? Do we want to push what that is being taught onto kids or is it, is it safe? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's definitely challenges in that perspective, but AI can make our lives easier. We can program a lot of the stuff that we're doing. We can program even influencers technically. You, you basically program everything to be the perfect thing that you'd want. Yeah. Um, and as it makes mistakes, it learns from them. And over time, AI can do that for not just a company per se, but it could do that for um, an individual, even at home, like automating all your tasks. So will that be good or bad for humanity and people having more time? Maybe that's bad. We saw a lot with COVID did cause a lot of mental illness. So, mm -hmm. um, so time may be good or bad. A universal basic income we've seen a lot lately. So. Um, AI is definitely going to be the way to go towards that route, but whether that's the right route or not, I don't know. I just know that AI, when it comes to things that I like, like trading, are definitely hugely beneficial if you can train it to do exactly what you do. That's crazy. Hey, Karu? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with all the points. Uh, from the content creation perspective, I mean, we use ChatGPT, that's all text based, but dude, AI, like image generators, even videos, it's like mind blowing. It's almost scary because you like you see videos that you think are real, like things crashing, and it's all AI, right? Yeah. That could cut a lot of costs when it comes to like movie production. So, I think it's going to redefine how content creators you know put out their content, monetize, and it's going to become like curation, right? You don't have to no longer be an artist, you know, living in a pool trying to make a you know penny or so, but maybe you can uh, monetize much more easier, right? and easier, and so forth. So that'll take a whole another segment that I mean, we haven't even seen exploded. It's very special. So we're so super early in your opinion, and there's so many things you can replace. So my take on this is just how scary AI technology has kind of progressed in the last, I mean, three, four years. If you look at like GPT, you know, 1.0 or GPT 2.0, it was crap. But in the space of these few years, GPT 4 right now, it can pretty much replace a lot of human labor. Especially when it comes to um, different fields, even my field, where like, let's say I'm researching up for a video, I can just tell AI to research the top you know, news articles, summarize that, write that into a fucking script. I can cut down labor completely. I can just yeah. cut my team down by like 80% um, pretty much um, at that point. So this is going to be transformative across all industries. And what's even scarier about AI is that it has a, pretty, a hive mind. Essentially, every time you interact with something like GPT, uh, ChatGPT, it learns and it gets even better. So by the time, you know, when it's like five years down the road, this is going to completely disrupt everything that's going on. So moving on, we talk, let's talk a little, a little bit about challenges as well. Because right now, obviously with OpenAI, that grew massively. Yeah. That's super successful. Yep. But crypto, really, we're not seeing that much good AI technology, right? We're, we're, being, seeing, we're being falling behind. So what do you think are the challenges? What's pretty the simple computing power. Like how much computing power does it take to run an AI, right? How many times you got logged on to ChatGPT and it was like, oh, uh, like our servers are full unless you upgrade your. So they're they're paying a lot of money for computing. Right? You talk about Bitcoin taking a lot. This is going to take tons more. Seven hundred thousand yeah. per thing. That's what yeah. the estimate yeah. for open yeah. AI is. So if you're gonna have all this, that's a huge burden because people have to have money to even get started. And then you need to train the AI models, which takes a while, like it could take years, sometimes tens of years, depending on what you're trying to do with it. I mean, look at like Elon trying to train the self-driving cars, it's still not really perfect. And nope. it's been years and years and years. So there's definitely challenges. And obviously there's, there's, there's fears too, like what happens if the AI gets a mind of its own and like decides humans are assholes, because we are, um, and like just crashes you into a wall, and, like, because you doesn't deserve, you don't deserve. So the, there, there's things that, you know, everyone watched Terminator, 
you know, this is the kind of stuff that started it, right? Skynet, robots, like this, is this kind of, this is yeah, where we're yeah. going. So and there's so, a fear there. So you see, you see that there's a fear. I think you, AI you, Elon, well. Elon even says it, right? So I would say like, those are kind of like the fears and some of the challenges. There's probably more. I'll let you guys kind of fill in more mm -hmm. from your side. No, absolutely. Like computing power, it's very, very expensive. And most people don't realize. So yeah, chat GPT is a lot of money when it's software this. But I think before we can even get there, you need quality data. Yeah. And the thing is, yeah, we have on-chain data, which is very raw and true to, you know, the accuracy. Right? But the question is, most people outside of crypto or even in crypto, it's very, very difficult to extract that data. It's so raw. So you still need to process it. There's a hundred different blockchains. How do you get it all? Unify that data, right? So that's going to be a huge problem. And it's just the nature of um, interoperability. It's still very uh, in the infancy stage within uh, blockchain. Yeah, so we're just really not there yet. And I think it's also about how, um, I think it's a combination of um, issues, right? The cost of an AI engineer is almost up to $200,000 per month, uh, yeah. per year, right? Yeah. Uh, most crypto projects, when, when they seek funding in the first few rounds, they get one or two or three, maybe five. Maybe million. five, so yeah. So you're not going to afford the top, top AI engineers with that salary point, right? So I think one is financial. The second is, I feel like a lot of people have given AI and crypto a bad name because they kind of, uh, copycatted other projects um, out there. Like say, for example, I've seen projects that just directly use uh, a GPT. Yeah, um, yeah, I've seen a few of them. Uh, API, they call up GPT. They don't have any unique technologies themselves. They're just, calling... they just made a bunch of commands that they figured out would be useful. And then yeah. you're like, oh yeah, now I can learn how to do this. And it's like, yeah. you can just ask chat GPT yourself. Yeah, they're, they're calling that blockchain AI. So yeah. that's actually giving blockchain AI a really bad name. So we're really stuck before we're kind of waiting for that breakthrough moment i feel like we're waiting for a one killer app mm. that will just completely <laughs> obliterate like, like, i you know, sneezed on the truth there the truth. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's a cz out there like another cz that's like an ai cz right yeah. and he can unite the community together yeah. you leverage the power of the communities mm. then actually um have good like funding and then use that to grow a proper ai project bam i think that's gonna be revolution yeah, interaction, I think. It's the big thing with AI is it can make interaction feel real, even if you're talking to a robot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's extremely powerful because, you know, we, we, we're we both in Chappie, right? Like uh, AI community mods, so you never have the lulls of like your community mods went to sleep and they're not in the same time zone mm -hmm. or they're in the same time zone. And now you don't have, you have like a four hour lull where people are just talking crap in your, right. your chat. Whereas now you could have something that literally is trained to like block certain words that are being used, like, you know, uh, block if you're posting retarded links and stuff yes. like that. And so that was simple. But if you had like five of those and they interact even with each other, sometimes you now have like a community of, of and you're you're training it to like ask the right questions to educate the community. So it's constantly being showing showing it in different ways. So AI community moderation and guidance. Yeah, yeah. and so then that's that's a direct application usage of AI. Yeah, so we've also seen AI. like with PodFast is taking like these four hour podcasts and turning them into 10 minutes where you could suck in all the major core competencies of that. And you could save hours and hours of your life too because uh, who wants to watch Michael Saylor with his high pitched voice, you know, uh, kind of <laughs> singing like he's on a, a broken uh, like violin or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's, uh, I don't want to listen for four hours. I want to like hear what his concepts that he's thinking about and what, you know, Lex Friedman is asking him about in, in 10 minutes. So this is where the technology is like really interesting because it saves time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like everything that you invest into should save you time. It should save you money. It, it, it should like make whatever tasks you're doing easier. And those are the three types of things that people will buy into when something new comes out. Because they're like, oh, it saves me time. It saves me money. I don't have to pay an accountant anymore. My lawyer is only as good as I need them to be until I need them in court because I get a chat GPT lawyer yeah, and it's pretty much going to be just as good or better uh, unless you're the lawyer in, uh, I can't remember where it was, in the US, this lawyer used chat GPT for all of his research and there were oh. fake cases. No. He didn't double check. Oh. Yeah, oh, then he lost his bar license for Ouch. that using Ouch. chat GPTs. But yeah, that's a great example of how it can be negative. Because it's not 100% accurate. It's right, not okay. Yeah. All right, I, I, I'll take this here, but, yeah. but, 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 but like, I think I think this is where people don't understand the limitations of AI, right? Because yeah. AI, um, it, it's not it, it's uh, it's being optimized to just answer, and it doesn't care about lying, right? Yes. But now with GPT four, it's actually a lot more truthful than three. So I saw a huge upgrade in just one year. So I feel like, dude, like there's so many applications. I think direct applications of AI. So I think you 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 put out two things there, right? Yeah. So one was Chappie, which is direct 
uh, application app apply AI using that to do query crypto content yep. moderation and PodFast, which is just summarizing content, making a video and audio hmm. from it. So what about like if you type in any chat in the world and now it can translate with GPT in a second? It's in every single language you want in the world, and it's yeah. pretty almost on point accurate. So it's you don't even need to you go to Japan, you don't speak any Japanese, and you just yeah. be like, all right, well, boop, just play a thing on your phone. Yeah. yeah. And it will just you'll listen to them and read it in English and then play it back in, in Japanese. Yeah. It's like local dialect here. Yeah, and I think yeah. AI will eventually be able to know what language it is and what yeah. language yeah. you speak, yeah. and you can wear like a little clip in your ear and it They're literally tells you is yeah, yeah, we have this technology yeah. already, but AI will learn so much faster yes. listening to like thousands of yes. people speaking the language every day. It'll know like even context of when what you mean by what word. Yeah, like an yeah. event's happening this weekend, so maybe you can kind of associate. Yeah, it, right? yeah. So any other projects you're looking at, Kitaru? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Cloudfast and Chappie, those are good, right? But I think uh, let's say on the retail side where AI can get really big, we're talking like B two B, you know, hundreds of million dollars, and that comes into like a provenance, a data integrity. So you know, if I buy this pharmaceutical, right, is it a fake or is it actually real? And I went through all this rigorous testing. It's very important because. Uh, there are people who died, right, and taking wrong mm-hmm. pills. So, for example, like an Origin Trail, um, they're based out of Europe. You know, they do all of this. So they work with like Walmart, uh, Costco, and all these big names. So I think that's pretty cool because like now we're not just stuck in this, you know, Web three, a small circle. Uh, it's AI actually crossing into Web three and also Web two, and I think that's where it's going to become a you know, two trillion dollar or those kind of big industries. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. So guys, we have. Different perspectives on why AI is going to be amazing, why the challenges that are, and why this field isn't as popping that heavily. But I see a lot of potential here. And guys, if you guys um, want to know a little bit more about what's happening, make sure you follow Coach K, you got Hikaru, and you got uh, me, Box Mining. We have different perspectives, and I really hope you guys enjoy this format for you guys because it's different viewpoints. And I really enjoyed it because we actually have very completely different ways of looking at things. Yeah. And getting that broad perspective is really what makes things pop. So guys, thank you for watching this episode. Thank you. See you next one. See you. See you next.